amazing Czech town is dominated by absolutely humongous castle, spectacular viewpoints and a romantic old city center nestled inside the horseshoe bands of the Vltava River. No wonder that this fairy tale like UNESCO World Heritage Site is one of the most popular day trips from Prague and as a tour guide I can't wait to show you the best things to do in Czeski Krumlo, Czechia. An outstanding example of a small European medieval town was built below a magnificent 13th century castle. Town has remained intact over the centuries and has a street layout from the Middle Ages. Old Town is a pedestrian-only area with cobbled streets following the meanders of the river. Most of the architecture dates between the 14th and the 17th centuries as the town reached its golden days in the 15th century. In the heart of the old town is the municipal square with a stone fountain and a plate column. The most remarkable building on the square is the town hall from the late 1500s. It was created from two Gothic houses merged with arcades and a Renaissance attic. Most of the historic buildings here have been converted into hotels, shops, museums and restaurants. Some of them are very interesting and quirky, like an old mill that has become a restaurant with a cool motorcycle museum. The Vltava River runs through Bohemia all the way through Prague. That is why, in the Middle Ages, this river was used as a busy trade route. A rocky hill above the two river bands was a perfect place from where one could control this important waterway. That is why a huge castle was built here. From the castle, town started to spread and developed inside the two horseshoe bands. Nowadays, the river around Czeski Krumlo is a popular kayaking and rafting spot. In summer, you'll often see folks floating around near town. You can rent kayaks and rafts to explore the river on your own or to guided excursions and day trips to nearby villages. A great place to take scenic photos of Czeski Krumlo is a small park right in front of the Baroque building of the former Jesuit high school. Inside is a regional museum with an exhibition showing the development of the region and a great place to learn more about the town's turbulent history. You see, Czeski Krumlo is near the Austrian and German border and since its foundation, its residents were both Czechs and Germans. But in the late 15th century, when gold was found next to the town, German miners came to settle, which shifted the ethnic balance in favor of the Germans. Before World War I, about 85% of the population was German, but after World War II, the town's longtime German population was expelled. Museum also houses a detailed ceramic model of the old town as it was around the year 1800. One of the largest models of its kind in the world has about 800 structures and also shows fortifications, walls and gates which no longer exist. To visit the museum and for other interesting attractions, you should get a Chesky Krumlo card as it saves you money and is a good value. To learn more about life in town at the turn of the 19th and 20th century, you should also visit an interesting museum in Art Nouveau Photo Studio. Museum offers a glimpse of town life 100 years ago through the vast works of two generations of photographers. Besides many old photos, photo postcards, glass plate negatives, cameras and darkroom equipment, the collection also includes personal diaries of the photographers and original furnishing of the flat. Besides discovering the beginnings of photography, you will also learn about the turbulent fate of a family from this region that has been a common home to the Czechs, Austrians and Germans. You can take a guided tour that lasts 50 minutes or use an audio guide. Most of the old town is contained within a U-shaped bend of the Vltava River, but the old Latran neighborhood and the castle are on the other side. This is the oldest part of the town that had developed below the castle. It was settled by the people who were working at the castle or had some sort of connection with the lords. Beautiful cobble streets of the neighborhood are lined with many historical buildings. They are decorated with interesting Gothic and Renaissance details, including painted images of saints and coats of arms of local noble families. One of the buildings is also an interesting church of St. Jost dating back to the 14th century that is no longer used for religious purposes. Church interior is split in three floors as it used to house a casino and a dance hall. Now it houses a gallery as well as shops and restaurant. Part of the neighborhood is also a former monastery of the Minorites from the 1300s. 
monastery complex is surrounded by walls and when you enter through the gates, you are greeted by a beautiful garden and views of the old town. Last monks left the monastery in the 1950s and the complex is now used for museum expositions and community halls. The monastery church from the 1300s was rebuilt in Baroque style in the 1600s and its interior has become a gallery of the Baroque church arts. Unfortunately, at the time of my visit, the church was closed due to renovation, but the interior holds outstanding pieces of wood carving, including the main Baroque altar of the Virgin Mary. But the most impressive church of Chesky Krumlo is St. Vitus Cathedral from the 1300s. It rises above the old town and together with the castle, they dominate the skyline. Cathedral was built in the Gothic style, but was rebuilt several times. Church has three naves with slender columns, typical of the area. The cathedral has frescoes from the 18th century and chapels of saints. The main altar is decorated with a painting of St. Vitus and the Virgin Mary from the 1600s decorated with icons and wood carvings. Today the Church of St. Vitus is used for church ceremonies and occasional classical music concerts. The opposite rocky hill that steeply rises above the river is occupied by the impressive Krumlo Castle. It was built in the 1200s to control the river used as the main trade route. Over the centuries, castle grew into a massive complex with five separate courtyards and more than 40 different buildings built in different time periods and styles and one of them is an interesting cloak bridge. It has five steps and connects four main courtyards of the castle with a fifth one. Bridge was built in the 1700s in a style of a Roman aqueduct. At the top of the bridge is an open crossing with two closed galleries above it. The upper closed gallery was reserved for nobility and allowed its residents to get all the way to the castle gardens. The lower closed gallery leads to Baroque Theatre, one of the greatest and best preserved Baroque theatres in the world. To maintain the humidity and temperatures of the theatre, only a small number of people are allowed to enter at a time and unfortunately, you are not allowed to take photos. Above the fifth courtyard of the castle rises a slight hill with beautiful castle garden. It changed its appearance many times until in the 17th century it acquired the features of a classic English garden. Garden spreads on different levels and on the slope that divides the upper garden and the lower part is the cascade fountain with sculptures. But one of the most recognizable parts of the massive castle complex is a colorful castle tower. It rises steeply on a rock above the Latran district. It was built to provide protection against the attacks from the north. Tower can be visited as part of the castle museum housed in an adjoining building. If you climb 162 steps, you will reach the highest point of the town with great views. Although the castle was founded in the 1200s by the house of Vitek, the family soon died out and their property was passed on to their relatives, the Lords of Rosenberg. Under the rule of this powerful aristocratic family, Chesky Krumlo reached its golden days. Rosenbergs died out in the 1600s and the castle became home of the Eggenberg family, who remodeled the castle and the town in a Baroque style. A century later, after Eggenbergs died out in the 1700s, Krumlo was passed through the inheritance to the Schwarzenberg family from Germany. They continued remodeling the castle in the Baroque style. During World War II, Krumlo was part of the Nazi Germany, but since it had no military industry, the town and the castle remained intact. After the war, the castle, alongside other Schwarzenberg property, was transferred into state ownership. Now it serves as a museum and there are three different castle sightseeing routes available. Also be sure to check my favorite tours and experiences of the area in the description below. My name is Rock, thanks for the thumbs up and for watching and see you next time.